Hi, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today we're going to do an installation of a file editor. Now there are two main uh, editors that are available from the add-on store. They are the Visual Studio Editor and the File Editor. We're going to be doing the Visual Studio Editor, which is the superior one of the two today, but I'll show you how to do the other one as well. You'll need this if you're going to be editing any YAML files. The majority of uh, installations these days do not require you to do it, but on occasions you still will need to be able to dive into the configuration.yaml or sensor.yaml, etc., to be able to do some updates. So let's go walk through the edit stop. So let's go through the instructions on how to install the Visual Studio Editor. So at the time of recording, I'm running on Home Assistant 2023.7.3 on my test environment. If we move across into settings and we go into the add-on store, I'm going to go down to the bottom where it says add-on store, press that button. Now in the search item, I'm going to search for visual. Well, as you see, it's already brought it up. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to press install. So the installation is complete. As you can see, it's currently running on 5.9.0. There's a few tick boxes that we can choose from down here. Watchdog, as talked about previously, if the add-on crashes for whatever reason, it will restart it. I'd highly recommend that you turn this on. Second one is for ease of access. There's a, a tick box for show in sidebar. If I turn this on, you'll see it will appear here. We now can start the add-on. The add-on started, as you can see, the usual one. We have a green dot in the top right-hand corner, which means that it's running successfully. We can access it through Open Web UI down here, or alternatively, we can access it through the Studio Code Server in the menu on the left-hand side. There are no configurations required. These are optional, so don't need to change anything. If we access the Studio Code Server from the menu on the left-hand side, you'll see it will kick, it will start and it will bring up this screen. It will bring up this message down saying code server is being accessed in an insecure context, web views. If you just say, I understand at this point in time, that will go away. The editor itself is actually very comprehensive and allows you to copy things into Home Assistant as well as copy things out of Home Assistant. For example, if I copy an individual file, I can drop it into Home Assistant. I can also drop in a folder structure as well, if I want to. And we can actually cut them, delete them, or even download them if we ne need to. In this case, we're going to delete the file we just put up there, test.txt, and we're going to delete the folder structure as well. The main configuration file here is what you'll be looking, spending most of your time in, but you'll also go into your secrets and scripts and scenes, etc. As I said, this is my test environment. Hence, it's very minimalistic at this point in time. However, you can see that this will build up over a period of time. If you click in this section over on the left-hand side and press Control F, you can search for individual entries inside of here. Likewise, if I go into the configuration here and click into the right side, I can also search on the right side as well. Likewise, if you click on the right-hand side and do Control F, you can search for any specific text that you'd like to search for. There's a comprehensive find and replace as well. Again, pressing Control F, pressing this little button to the left hand side, you'll see you'll be able to find a piece of text and replace it with a piece of text. Because the editor is context sensitive, it will analyze what you're typing in and give you options available to be entered in at that point in time, but it will also error check it for you as well. If I typed in something that it was not expected to see, for instance, just typing in free text, As you can see, it now found lots of problems. And that's because of the fact that the it is not expecting to see this at this point in time, and all the text that follows is causing an error. Deleting this, we'll revert it back to acceptable again. As I said, this is a very comprehensive editor and is my recommended one. However, I'll put down in the below in the comments a full description and a links to the uh, user manual for this editor. However, if you know how to use uh, any editor, you should be able to use this one. Now, the alternative to using this, if we go back into add-ons, press that add-on store, we can either search for file editor, but it's here already. 
select this one and press install. Installation has been completed. Now, before we start it, we have the same again. Watchdog, turn on. If it ever crashes, this will automatically restart it. Underneath, show in sidebar. Again, turn on and it will show as file editor along with the little spanner. If this doesn't show, then you need to clear your cache, which is your control F5 in your browser. Now we can press start. File editor has started. We're currently running on version 5.6.0. As before, check your green dot. It's currently running. As you can see, it makes minimal impact onto the CPU or the RAM usage. Again, for general usage, there is no configuration required in this um, add-on. And that's it. Installation for Visual Code Server or File Editor. Um, my personal preference, Studio Code Server, mainly because of its context sensitivity that it has and its the ability to be able to copy files in and out with ease. For me, I would say run with Studio Code Server. The context sensitivity and the ability to check your code beforehand to avoid any issues when you hit the um, restarting and passing the configuration file for, to make sure that it's valid, that's worth itself in gold. I hope you enjoyed this short video. It's an important one to be able to get Studio Code Server or File Editor installed to be able to edit your YAML files. And I'll join you on the next one. Uh, please like, subscribe, and put an alert on the, on the channel. And I'll join you in the next one.